Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. Uh, well, this is the beginning of the big Traxxas uh, 4x4 build uh, for racing. And uh, as I've mentioned, I'm going to be uh, racing this off-road and I'm also going to be racing it on-road. Um, so the on-road is going to be first. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, taking advantage of the low CG. I'm going to be uh, putting some uh, spacers into the shock absorbers and basically just tuning the suspension to ride lower and tighter. And while I'm at it, I'm doing a lot of modifications. Um, I'm adding things like uh, high performance drive shafts. Uh, they will be a lot stronger than these plastic ones. They're going to run smoother, generally just be better all around. I'm uh, one of the big items is a full set of ceramic bearings, so I'm going to be replacing all of the bearings. Uh, I'm putting in a uh, limited slip center diff, um, a, a gear differential instead of the uh, slipper clutch. Uh, bu -bu -bum. Lots of different things. Uh, for example, I uh, and I know I mentioned this in a previous video. I am replacing the front shock tower with a rear shock tower. This is an RPM. It seems a little stronger than the rear one. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the RPM and put it at the rear of the car and uh, take the, um, if it will mount in properly, it should. Uh, but basically I'm going to put this in the back and the uh, slightly more flexible stock one in the front because the front takes uh, less abuse than the rear. There's more weight back here with the motor and, uh, and such. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to start by doing some disassembly. Uh, the first thing I'm going to be doing is replacing the steering system with an aluminum setup, uh, mounting the servo, putting in a nice solid servo arm, uh, be um, bearings for that. Uh, and then as I'm putting things back together, I'm going to be uh, doing the drive shafts, front end, and uh, I'm going to be replacing uh, hardware as I go with stainless steel hardware. I have a battery mount kit for taller batteries because I may be running some 3 or 4S other than the standard 2S. And I've got uh, nice Proline shocks. Um, I have rear shocks for front and for the rear. That's why I'm switching out the shock tower with a rear sized shock tower for the front. Um, let's see. Most of this uh, was covered earlier in previous videos. This is just uh, the, some stock parts that come with the kit um, because this is a, a brand new roller. Uh, putting in a hobby wing, um, 4300 kV motor, and uh, a 1 8 uh, speed controller, and this is a 1 10th scale motor, so it's a good package for, for this car. I'm not going to have to worry about speed, um, I mean uh, uh, ESC issues, and I have aluminum diff cases uh, that I will be replacing uh, or rebuilding the diffs and uh, getting rid of the plastic in favor of uh, some stronger aluminum cases. And there's a handful of small items. Um, I've got a, uh, a center bracket that basically goes from here to here, um, stiffens up the chassis a little bit, uh, reduces flex and breakage. I'm not going to be bashing this. I'm going to be um, racing it, but uh, those races can get pretty hardcore, especially the road races. And... Um, I'm going to try the brace. I'm going to see if it's an issue. It's not very heavy, uh, especially if I'm running three and four S's. I don't think that weight's going to be a problem for this truck. I think uh, strength is more the issue. So I'm going to start taking the front end apart and uh, taking care of these items. At times, I'm just going to fast forward the video so you don't have to watch repetitive stuff. And at, uh, at times I'll be uh, running at regular speed because I'll be talking to you, telling you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Just kind of getting an idea here of uh, what sizes 
I'm gonna need to uh, work with. One nice thing about this uh, rebuild is that since this is a new roller, everything is nice and clean. And uh, anything that I keep from this I know is in good shape. I haven't had much Traxxas experience, so I'm kind of uh, getting the feel for how things go together. I'm not going to worry about the back end right now. Let's work on the front. Just going to kind of disassemble in a top-down method. So right off the bat, I am taking off this sway bar. Now, I have a, <clears throat> a street-style bumper. It's a J Concepts kit. They uh, have a front end bumper and a, uh, a body that uh, converts a slash 4x4 into a um, more of a road car or a street racer. So I will probably be setting this bumper aside and putting in that kit for now since this is that time of the year for running on road. So there's basically four bolts that hold in the entire front clip. That's these four, two here, two here, and then this whole assembly comes off as one unit. There are a lot of things I like about Slash um, and Traxxas in general. I, I've never been the, a huge fan, <clears throat> excuse me, but I am uh, I'm starting to kind of like some of the stuff they do. Um, it is lower budget. It's ready to run. It's, it's kind of the everyman vehicle, but um, their short course trucks were really groundbreaking in the hobby. And... Um, the uh, the simplicity the uh, the way things can be um, used across multiple kits the front diff is the same as the rear diff uh, things bolt together in very similar fashions it it, uh, it makes it easy to uh, to work on them and and to learn how to use them and uh, set them up. And just to make my life easier um, while I'm working with this, I'm going to go ahead and take off the big bumpers front and rear right now and just uh, have that out of the way, which means I need to take off the rear sway bar as well. That is kind of a pain. It is hard. To, you can't take off the rear sway bar without taking off the rear clip. So I'm going to take off the rear clip. I mean, you can probably do it, but it's very hard to, to get to those uh, bolts where they screw in. I could get it, take it off up here, but I want to get rid of the whole linkage, or at least take off the entire linkage. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these, and I'd be willing to bet that the bolts front and rear are the same size for, this, uh, for these clips that mount in. 
These two are the same. I am going to use my power driver if I've got any battery power left. That will certainly make a lot of this faster. Okay, now one thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go get some bags. I'll be right back. I'm a big fan of keeping organized, so I got a bunch of Ziplocs here. And I mentioned that I'm going to be replacing all this hardware with, uh, with stainless steel, but it's a lot easier to replace stuff when you have it and can identify it. And some parts of this I may not be taking apart and uh, <clears throat> I may not be putting them back together uh, immediately. So having all of these screws and such uh, organized definitely will make it easier. For example, I'm going to put all the sway bar parts and screws in one bag. Brand new clutch assembly, never going to use it. Uh, these magic markers I've got here are made by Bitty Design. Uh, that's B I T T Y D I S I G N. They make permanent markers that will write on anything. Stuff Sharpies will just wipe off of, like plastic bags. Now, these sensors, I'm probably going to remove. Um, not really worried about that telemetry, and I don't have a Traxxas uh, radio set up to, to do that anyway. front and rear sway bars and <clears throat> I've actually got replacements for those I bought a, a kit that is gonna have uh, the front and the rear one um, but it's gonna have along with it a, uh, a like a stronger and a, a weaker one as well so I'll have some uh, ability to uh, test and tinker For now, and here we have servo mounting. Okay, so now servo, but the real question is which direction does it go? So let's figure that out. Okay, so here's our front end clip. There's our linkage. So, okay, so easy enough. Our, uh, here's our rod uh, and here's our steering set up at more or less center. And so our servo needs to point this direction.
And that is a super long servo wire. My God, look at this. That's ridiculous. I'm probably going to just trim this and uh, put on some new end pieces there and uh, fix that up. Okay. Yeah, it would be nice. I mean, they, uh, they, you know, a lot of people bash these and um, they, uh, I do have a waterproof servo. I know they usually provide waterproof servos. It would be nice if they had some kind of gasket. I'm just going to take a peek in this bag of parts that came with it. Okay, we got a pinion gear, got a few miscellaneous bolts, these are for the servo. We have another pinion gear, and another pinion gear, that's interesting, they give us three different pinion gears. Are they all the same pitch? More or less look it. They should be. Let's see, 13 tooth, 16 tooth, and I hate it when manufacturers don't mark their pinion gears. It's just not that hard to do. Come on guys, it's on here somewhere, please negative I am guessing from the size it's probably 18 tooth maybe I'll count it out later anyway that gives me some gear choices I've got, already got a bunch of uh, pinion gears for this same uh, uh, 32 pitch um, I think they're 32 pitch aren't they yeah 32 pitch um, so I'm going to have a, a broad range of them, uh, so we'll worry about gearing later. Miscellaneous tools. I really don't need those. Okay, this block here is for battery spacing and some battery padding and uh, body um, protectors are always nice okay so I am not gonna worry about uh, about these right now so I'm just gonna put those in a kind of an extra bag Now remember, you're you're screwing into plastic, so don't uh, over torque and um, uh, over torque those and, and tear them. Now I am forgetting a step. I should be replacing those with stainless steel, especially considering their location and. Trying to sift through that box is going to be a nightmare, so I am going to get a nice big tray here and just kind of cover up a couple of those and dump the big ones. Leave the little ones alone. That will make this process a lot easier. Hopefully. That is kind of strange that they do not provide that particular screw. It's supposed to be a complete kit for this vehicle. I may just need to use button heads instead. sure are plenty of those 
Also, these are kind of short when you consider the amount of uh, servo material there. You're really not covering a lot. So that is not the right size. Let's see what we got here. Okay, that looks right. And then a couple of washers on those would do nicely. So these look like they are probably 12 millimeter. And uh, I would say those are M2s. Okay, one, two, three, four. Yeah, this is going to be much more secure than these short little uh, bolts they provide. Those are just not long enough. That is a recipe for stripping them out. I mean, really, it's only getting about two millimeters worth of thread before it starts bottoming out. You see how much screw is there all of that is going to get screwed into that nice thick chunk of plastic that's behind here with this in place look at that that's all the threads that are going to go in there compared to that it's almost three times as much in the way of threads making contact When you use electric tools and plastic, go nice and easy. Just get them down. I mean, even with the clutch, just get them down to the bottom close and then tighten them off by hand the rest of the way. Okay, so now I need to rebuild the servo saver. You know, you can't always trust a lot of these so-called kits. Uh, for example, these bolts have to be a very specific type. It has to have this type of head. It can't be a button head, otherwise it's not going to fit up in here and be stabilized by that. So, of that type, they only give us a few and they're on the long side or I would think they're too short so uh, fortunately this is a fairly long uh, plastic hollow pipe here I should be able to 
thread in the longer ones. I'm going to give it a try and see how that goes. Now I think I'm going to have to use the shorter than stock ones. Now they say, oh, it's a you know replacement for everything on there. Well, not quite. But there certainly are a lot of pieces of hardware here, so I think that's going to be okay. Okay, now these are a little long. I don't want them rubbing up against this edge here and catching. They look like they are Yeah, they're like two millimeters shorter, longer, excuse me, than these. Let's see. I may have to sub in something a little shorter. Let's see if it goes through. No, it doesn't. It's not long enough. Wow. Yeah, there's... These are not a part-for-part -part swap over. Don't believe it. Says so. Traxxas Slash 4x4 LCG Platinum. Stainless steel screws. They're not a direct swap. Some of them will work. Some of them are not going to. Now, I could get out the Dremel and trim them up, cut the ones that uh, I need shorter, but that's a lot of work. I'll just swap in the stainless hardware where it will fit. Okay, now while I have this assembly out, I should uh, go ahead and take off the shock tower. Okay, uh, 6851R is the drive shaft's front, and uh, 1951R drive shaft's rear. So this is the one we need to open right now. Okay, so... Got some fresh pins. Now, since I am going to be doing bearings, I need to go ahead and uh, disassemble this. Let's get out this bearing kit. Uh 
those look like the right size. Yep. And then we need these suckers. And I know they look the same, but they are not the same. sure that I kind of keep these things together. Because I may be able to sell them. Since they're all brand new. Now, these plastic uh, hexes are nice and light, but they are also prone to falling off. Those are not bolt those are bolt on. There we go. And they look like they are the same thickness, more or less. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the pin. different size pen. Okay, well I guess I'll just have to stay with the plastic ones for now. That's odd. Those are usually a universal item. There we go. They must deliberately use a thicker pin so it snaps in place or something like that. Not sure. Cross that bridge later. Maybe I'll try one of these later on the next one. Okay. Since these look similar, I need to be very careful not to swap one for the other and get them confused. They are far too expensive to put in the wrong ones. There we go. there and start taking this apart. size. There we go. Okay. 
make sure you identify the thread side. Trying to decide if I want to crack these diffs right now and rebuild them, or if I want to just assemble it as is and set it up, get the feel for it, because I'm going to want to tinker with different diff lube front and rear. You know what? I think I'm going to. I just want to check some uh, some numbers on diff lube and uh, see what I want to do there. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, since I'm setting this up for road course right now, I want a much thicker diff lube in the rear than the front, and thicker than it would normally be stock, so I get more of a locker effect in the rear and uh, a freer differential up front, so the uh, the truck turns easy, um, but when it's accelerating it hard, it doesn't want to slide the rear. So, the question is, do I want to mess with that right now? Let's see. Well, you know what? I also want to make sure these things even fit, because I bought a kit for the center diff, I can't remember the name of the company I bought it from, and it uh, it wasn't machined properly. It wouldn't accept the uh, the gears, and uh, you could you know you, once you looked at it, you could just see that it wasn't done right, and it was too late to return it, and uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. If I can come up with the name, I'll let you guys know. Um, I'm not sure if I've got the. I might be able to look it up in my email history and figure out who I got it from but um, uh, I've heard good things about these so yeah as long as I'm this deep in I might as well okay I hope you enjoyed this video please click like and please subscribe to my channel 